A father and child arrived at the nest egg today, wheeling in a tall object concealed by a large blanket tied in place of string and dangling strips of scribbled parchment. This was an unexpected visit, as most appointments are made in advance with assigned dates and times, since specific preparations and safety measures might need to be put in place. It was common practice for the nest egg to deal with one client at a time, and usually only one client per day. The daughter explained that she didn't know how to get in contact, but pleaded to have a meeting immediately as they had an important case. Walk-ins weren't normally permitted, however this duo arrived on a day with no scheduled clients, so an exception can be made. Also this request had sparked a bit of curiosity. The evaluator, one of the nest egg's managers who oversees all item evaluations, accepted to run the interview along with a few note recorders. Strangely, it was the daughter who also did the talking, with the father silently sat down, his head hung low staring at the floor. She was asked to start from the beginning and to be completely truthful with her account. She states that her father is a renowned artist who has done many commissions for influential folk far and wide in the membrane. He is held in high regard within the artist community for his incredible portrait work and her daughter was training as his apprentice. Here is an extract of the statement made by the young apprentice. He likes to experiment with different materials, and he'd heard of a type of powder that can be mixed into paint, from seashells I think. It's supposed to create an illuminating effect that's quite popular right now. Customers were demanding it for their commissions, but we couldn't find any from our usual vendors. Then we came across a new vendor who happened to have one pouch full of the powder left, and sold it to us for a really good price. It was a little strange, this stuff was supposed to be expensive. But we had deadlines coming up, so we just needed to get on with work. My father began painting and worked on it for a whole week. Then he got to the crucial part of adding the powder to the paint. You need to do this before the final layers to get the right level of illumination. We left it overnight, covered up so that the powdered paint could set properly, but when we checked on it in the morning, the whole painting had vanished. I thought we'd been scammed, and it was spoiled powder that we used. I turned to my father, but he was staring intensely at the canvas. At first I assumed he was just upset, but then I noticed the canvas wasn't empty anymore. I could see traces of paint on it, fresh paint, and it was appearing as if being brushed onto the surface by an invisible hand. Then I realised it was creating an image. I could see a face starting to emerge, but it wasn't just any face, it was my father's face and it was painting him exactly as he was, standing right there, staring into it. A complete duplicate of him made of paint. It was incredible to look at. Then I noticed something else weird. The painting kept shifting, the head changing angles, and those eyes were looking around. It was mimicking whatever movement my father made. He was in some kind of trance, just smiling at the painted figure which smiled back. I asked him what was happening, but he just ignored me reaching out his hand and moving it over the canvas, which copied his actions. It's not unheard of to have moving paintings. Several of our associates know the techniques, but I'd never seen anything like this. A painting acting like a mirror, creating its own reflection of my father as he moves. And it was glowing, really glowing. It lit up the whole studio. I thought it was beautiful. But it wasn't beautiful enough to trick me. There was something off about it, and I wasn't getting scammed twice in one week. I grabbed a blanket and threw it over the entire easel, covering it all up. As soon as I did this, my father passed out and collapsed to the floor, looking completely drained. When he came round, he wasn't his normal self. He didn't speak or look at me, just sat there staring at the floor. He wouldn't eat, and I can't even tell if he's sleeping. I wasn't sure what to do next. I thought about destroying the painting, but that could let loose whatever might be in there, and it wouldn't be fair to throw it away and inflict it upon someone else but it definitely couldn't stay in our studio. Then I remembered this place, and I know you take things like this for folk, so I thought I'd try here. If the young apprentice's story is true, then this is quite a rare item. It's uncertain whether something like this has ever existed before, but a few employees will be instructed to search through records to see if anything similar has arisen in the past, which might help figure out its true potential. Before it is housed in a nest egg, the item will need to be evaluated. This is going to be difficult as the girl warns the painting cannot be looked at directly, or it'll start replicating whoever is in front of it, potentially ending up in her father's state. From just looking at the obscured object, a lot of activity can be detected. The true power of the item remains unclear, but it does prove the apprentice is at least truthful about this being no ordinary canvas. So we won't risk revealing the painting to inspect it. 
However, from the apprentice's statement, it sounds like the painting can only focus on one target at a time, which explains how she was able to cover it up unaffected. So at least we can hazard a guess that this isn't an immensely powerful item. This is further proven through inspection of the other additional elements. The painting and easel have been covered with a regular blanket, which has no particular qualities. Our attention was drawn to the strips of parchment attached to the string wrapped around the painting. The girl explains she covered it in sealing charms to trap whatever might be lurking inside the painting. She had tried to make her own charms after seeing the method for it in one of her father's books. Unfortunately, these ones aren't very potent and wouldn't even keep ink from spilling out of a pot, let alone a powerful entity. However, this does show that the painting remains inactive when completely covered, no matter the material used, so it won't require an enormous amount of power to store. But precautions will still be taken to ensure that no thefts or accidental incidents involving employees occur. The paints and tools will be examined and stored alongside, as they could have traces of the powder which needs to be contained. Luckily the apprentice brought the equipment along, thinking the same as us. The apprentice was wise not to destroy or dispose of the painting herself, as there's no telling if something worse would have been unleashed, and for now it seems the painting remains in a dormant state when completely covered. An examination of the father was provided before the painting was housed, to ensure there was no remaining connection between him and the painting. No strong lingering effects were revealed, but he was very weak. From the statement given, he had made physical contact with the painting, which could explain his weakened state and why it hasn't worn off yet. He's still unresponsive, but his daughter is confident he will regain himself over time. We recommended a tonic he could try which might start to heal the effects. It's common for the nest egg to do routine checks on clients every now and again, especially when issues with their vaults arise, so we asked the apprentice where she would be located. The girl told us she had closed their studio up and would be taking her father to the beach to rest. We gave her the nest egg's number and said to use any payphone she comes across to get in touch with us. There are other methods of contact, but this one was the most straightforward. Now for housing the item. The painting will remain covered with the blanket, as well as additional layers, and will be bound with proper sealing charms as a precaution. All the tools used in the painting's creation will remain with it, placed in a dark vault. No lights are permitted in this vault, and no regular maintenance is required, so this vault will remain in permanent lockdown. The apprentice is convinced the powder was the cause of this incident, and we agree it is suspicious, so it was a priority for further analysis. A small sample was taken from the paintbrush used in the item's creation. The report shows that while there were traces of the illuminative seashell, which is a primary ingredient in this advertised powder, there was also remnants of reflective glass shards, presumably glass from a mirror. It's clear now why the apprentice said this was an urgent matter, as we might have a race against time on our hands to prevent further incidents. An immediate investigation will be conducted, as there's a potential chance these shards have been scattered across multiple batches of the popular seashell powder, which could have been purchased recently. The apprentice provided us with a complete list of her father's art colleagues to contact and warn about the product, and to tell us immediately if they have a life-draining mirror painting. Based on the apprentice's rough description, we will also track down the rogue vendor to figure out their motivation for tricking and selling this contaminated powder.